My name is Mark, a recording angel. I have been observing this earth since the dawn of creation. The Most High has asked me to share my recordings with you. The following are my records of the Church's early years and earliest believers, not just adults, but children too, collected in this book, Champions of the King, The Story of the Apostles. If today's recording contains situations which might be uncomfortable for younger listeners, I will mark the video with the words parental guidance recommended. Suleiman, Gaza Road. Suleiman yawned quietly as sweat trickled down his face. The occasional stray breeze lurking in the Gaza desert brought only another blast of heat. Today, though, the air was absolutely still and stifling. The Lord Treasurer was totally oblivious to his young servant as he read haltingly out loud from the scroll he had purchased in Jerusalem. This part of the trip might be long and hot and boring, but it was the most exciting month Suleiman had ever had in his life. The Lord Treasurer had traveled clear to Jerusalem to worship the god Jehovah. It took them thirty days of continuous travel from their home in Ethiopia to reach the city. He shook his head. How lucky the Jews who live in Israel are, he thought to himself. They can assemble together and worship God at all of the feasts, whereas I and the Lord Treasurer have made the trip of a lifetime. Well, the Lord Treasurer's lifetime, anyway. Secretly, Suleiman hoped that he would make it back to Israel some day. After all, he was still young, only fifteen. The sights and sounds of the holy city, and especially the temple, had fascinated the young man and stimulated his curiosity. I had eagerly recorded the questions he had asked and the enthusiasm with which he had worshipped the Mighty One. Now my wingtips quivered as I anticipated the excitement he would feel for what would happen next. The Holy One's spirit was on the Gaza road with us, and I could not wait to see what his plans were. When Suleiman glanced behind him, he noticed a man running along the road to catch up with them. He wasn't sure whether to mention the man's presence, interrupting the Lord Treasurer's reading or not. However, as the man drew nearer, the stranger shouted, Hello! The Lord Treasurer put his scroll down. Hold the caravan, he ordered. Someone is trying to catch up with us. His chariot stopped, as well the rest of his retinue. They had not been moving very fast, for though he had beautiful horses to draw his elegant chariot, their supplies rode on slow and cantankerous donkeys, who were built for strength, not speed. Suleiman grinned to himself. He was certain that the donkeys were as glad for a break as he was. The man soon caught up with them, pausing to catch his breath. Jumping to the ground from the chariot, Suleiman approached the stranger. Do you wish to speak to the Lord Treasurer, loyal servant of the Kandas, Queen Mother of Ethiopia? The Lord Treasurer bowed his head slightly behind the boy. I am Philip, the man said, from Jerusalem. Ah, the Lord Treasurer replied, Philip, a lover of horses. The man laughed. Yes, that is what my name means, although perhaps it should be just one who would love to have horses. Your name and your speech, began the Lord Treasurer. You don't sound like someone from Jerusalem. You are Greek, yes? Philip bowed. I am. Ah, that is good. At least those of us who can speak Greek can communicate, no? After all, Greek is the language of trade and money. It is. Suleiman shifted his weight from one foot to the other. He was dying to know what the man wanted, but the rules of hospitality made the banter mandatory before they could get down to the real purpose of the conversation. Fortunately, Philip must have been in a hurry or else he had run out of small talk. I heard you reading, he said. The Lord Treasurer looked up. Yes, the writings of the prophet Isaiah. And you are having trouble understanding them? The Treasurer laughed. Of course, I have no one here to explain them to me. The man broke into a wide grin. So did Suleiman. Suddenly, he knew what the man wanted. Do you understand them? asked the Lord Treasurer. I will study them with you, Philip said. Now it was the treasurer's turn to grin. Climb in. Ride with me in my chariot. It is a long road. We have plenty of time. 
I would be delighted to. He stepped upon the chariot. The treasurer signaled, and the caravan resumed its slow progress across the desert. Read to me the part you were just at, Philip said. And like a sheep, he opened not his mouth, began the Lord Treasurer. When he finished, he turned to Philip. Who is the prophet talking about? Himself or someone else? How long were you in Jerusalem? Philip asked, seeming to ignore the treasurer's question. We stayed a little more than a month, the official answered, puzzled. He looked thoughtful. Many strange things happened while we were there. I heard people constantly discussing a man named Yeshua of Nazareth. His followers seemed to be everywhere, even though he had apparently been executed. It was very confusing to us, because some of the people we spoke to talk as if he was still alive. Others said he was gone, and some insisted he was dead. Do you know anything about him? I am a follower of his, and Isaiah was speaking of him. This passage seems to be referring to sacrifices. And what does it mean when it speaks about a man of sorrows? Yeshua of Nazareth was a man of sorrows, Philip explained. The whole sacrificial system was God's way of telling us about him and pointing to his life when he would send his son to die for our sins. His life and his blood would pay the penalty for us so that we would not have to die for our own sins. For thousands of years we have waited for this to happen, but when he came we didn't recognize who he was. Oh, it says that here too, the Lord Treasurer exclaimed, unrolling part of the scroll. Here it is, because he wouldn't be impressive, people wouldn't recognize who he was. Philip nodded. And that is what happened. Even though we didn't give him the honor that he deserved as the son of Jehovah, he continued through with the plan and offered his life as the lamb to repair our broken relationship with God. The treasurer thought a moment. So, it does make sense. I knew it would. The writings of such a great prophet had to have deeper meaning. My people have known of this prophet for hundreds of years. They have? It was Philip's turn to sound surprised. Oh, yes. Tell him, Suleiman. The boy, who had been wanting a chance to join the conversation, flashed a grateful smile at the Lord Treasurer. We worship the God of Abraham, too. You do? Philip stared at the two men sharing the chariot with him. Their dark skin glistened in the hot sunlight. But, but, you're from Ethiopia, he protested. What do the Ethiopians know of Abraham and his God? The treasurer laughed, taking no offense at Philip's shock. Do you remember our king you had here in Israel named Solomon? He asked. Well, of course, Solomon was the greatest king ever. Well, maybe David was, but certainly Solomon was the wisest man ever. The Lord Treasurer nodded. Well, young Suleiman here is named for him. There are many of us in my country who worship God Jehovah and keep the Holy Sabbath. My young servant Suleiman and I are both worshippers of Jehovah, and we came to Jerusalem to offer sacrifices at the temple. I see. Philip did not know quite what to say. How did you know of the prophet Isaiah? One of my ancestors, Suleiman said, was Ebed Melech. Have you heard of him? Philip paused for a moment. The name is familiar. He was a friend of the prophet Jeremiah, the Lord Treasurer explained. When one of your kings imprisoned Jeremiah into a cistern just before Judah went into captivity, Ebed Melech, help pull Jeremiah from it. The prophet especially appreciated the fact that Ebed Melech threw rags down into the pit for Jeremiah to put under his arms so that the ropes wouldn't injure him. Others took the prophet to Egypt for his own safety, and Ebed Melech came south after that to dwell in the country of the Nubians. Many of his descendants still live among my people. I had heard many stories of the prophets Isaiah and Jeremiah, and while in Jerusalem on our trip, I bought this scroll so that we could read some of the great prophetic writings for ourselves. Philip laughed. <laughs> Imagine our God coordinating events so that we could meet here today and study the scroll together. They continued to study and talk. 
a few verses at a time, exclaiming again and again about God's goodness and how the prophecies suddenly made sense when seen from the perspective of Yeshua's life. It seemed as if they had been talking for only a short time. Yet by now the sun hung low over the horizon as they rounded a bend in the road and came across a small body of water. The Lord Treasurer grabbed Philip's arm. Is there anything to prevent me from being baptized here? He asked. They had been talking for some time not only about the prophecies of Isaiah, but about the growth of the group of believers. Nothing. Surely the Lord would not coordinate everything as he has to give us this time to study and come to this water if he did not intend for you to be baptized and become one of his. Would you baptize me too? Suleiman asked as they stepped down from the chariot and started toward the little pond. Of course, Philip smiled. Does this make me fully one of the group of believers? Asked the Ethiopian. He looked down at the ground. As a eunuch, I was not allowed into the temple. Philip shook his head sadly. The body of Christ recognizes no boundaries. Even though our people used to do so, I just came back from preaching in Samaria. It wasn't that long ago that the disciples, those closest to Yeshua himself, hated the Samaritans. In fact, John even asked Yeshua once to pour down fire and burn up a city in Samaria. But on my last trip there, I baptized many people, and Peter and John came up there into Samaria and laid hands on them, and the Holy Spirit filled the Samaritan believers. As a believer in the body of Christ, we are equal. He touched the Ethiopian's shoulder. We draw no lines between Jews, Greeks, men, women, eunuchs, rich, poor. We are all one. He died for all of us. They waded into the water. Suleiman and I will take everything you have taught us to the court of the Queen Mada, the Lord Treasurer announced. In fact, I will make young Suleiman my spokesperson, for I stay very busy in the treasury. But I will give him my authority, and he can teach what you have explained to us. Many will be delighted to hear and will want to become Yeshua's followers. And you will be the Lord Yeshua's first missionaries to your country. Philip said, I am honored to have met you and been able to share Yeshua with you. The baptism was quick. As Suleiman stepped out of the water, he turned to Philip to thank him. But the man was no longer there. Where did he go? He asked the Lord Treasurer. Surprised, the Lord Treasurer looked around. Could he have been an angel? I don't think so, his master replied. He said that he was a man, that he was a follower of Yeshua. I believe he was, but perhaps the spirit of Yeshua swept him away to someone else who needed to hear from him just as we did. After all, he did say that Yeshua's spirit was here on earth now, that Yeshua had gone back to heaven. Suddenly, Suleiman and the Lord Treasurer broke into joyful laughter. It doesn't matter, they said in unison. Meanwhile, we have much to tell. I can't wait till we get home, Suleiman said. How good is the God Jehovah, and how good his son Yeshua to send his spirit. I nodded. They were right about that. Jehovah and his son Yeshua are good, and I am greatly honored to be working for them. This broadcast has come from the book Champions of the King by Sally Pearson Dillon, with permission from the Review and Herald Publishing Association. This book and the rest of the series, War of the Ages, can be purchased by going to www.adventistbookcenter.com or by calling 1-800-765-6955. I'm your narrator, Austin Backus, and this audio project is a gift to you from my free Christian book ministry, RXF 1888. Please visit our website, www.rxf1888.com, to request free Christian books for both kids and adults. And join us here again for more stories from Mark the Recording Angel.